Hello everyone, I'm Dil. Welcome to Hi Hi History, a channel where we will talk about a history of history. And today we will talk about a concept of history and historiography and why they are so important. But before that, load the intro. What do you think when we talk about history? Maybe you are thinking about the boring history card where you always fall asleep and go meet with George Washington, or the story of Napoleon Bonaparte which you have read because you are a good student, or the pizza that you ate last night at your friend's birthday party. Well, all of these are kind of history in some aspect. So, what exactly is history? Well, history is an interesting word because it can mean an event that happened in the past, or a study of events that happened in the past. For the first definition, eating pizza is a history. The study of Napoleon Bonaparte is a history. Your grandma love letter is also a history. For the second definition, the Encyclopedia of Britannica defines history as the discipline that studies the chronological records or events as affecting a nation or people based on a critical examination of source materials and usually presenting an explanation of their causes. So, when you study about the past event or talk with your friend about this last time your teacher gave you an A or watch the Queen Gambit on Netflix, you are doing history. In this series, we will talk use these two concepts of history interchangeably while leading you to a story of historical writing. If you have followed me until this point, you may have a question in mind. Why do we have to study about history? Different people will answer this question differently, but here I will share my perspective. Martin Luther King Jr., an American Baptist minister and activist once said, We are not makers of history. We are made by history. I would like to oppose that. We are both makers of history and made by history. Surely, history involves in socialization of individuals since it makes a society the society we see today. However, our action can also alter the part of history. We learn history to know what we might do to shape our future. When we learn about history, we will see a variety of concepts, ideology, perspectives, mindsets, and ideas from people in different places at different times. History helps us see how people are influenced by their society and encourage us to think differently, to open up ourselves for other voices from other people. However, when we talk about history, we will have to be aware of its nature. History is not an ultimate truth which we have to wholeheartedly believe in. Take a case of the monument's removal for example. What will you call the removal of Lenin and Stalin monuments after the fall of the Soviet Union? Reformation or destruction? How about the time when Taliban built up a 1,500-year-old statue of Buddha in Afghanistan in 2001. Reformation or destruction? The answer is, it depends. It depends on who and when you ask the question. Moreover, when we talk about history, especially in our daily life, we usually base our knowledge on the memory. But unless you are a super genius who can remember every single detail in your life, your memory will occasionally trick you. Just think about what you ate last month. Can you remember that? Well, for me, I personally cannot. Yes, maybe no one wants to know about the history of what you have eaten, but this example shows us that when we rely our knowledge of history on the memory. Sometimes it can be a bit tricky. I'm back. 
Now let's turn to more professional history. History is mainly composed of two parts, facts and interpretation. Facts are something like an apple fell down on Newton's head, or George Washington cut down a cherry tree, or Gabriel Johann Mendel planted the green trees. They are either true or false. Facts can sometimes be based on memory, but most of the time, historians will try to use some type of documents as much as possible. Historical records make our story more reliable, but that doesn't mean it cannot be false. One famous case was the donation of Constantine, which was believed to be written by the Roman Emperor in 337 CE, giving the Pope a complete authority over the western part of Christendom. However, after studying the language used in the document, it is thought to be made in the 800s. Well, that's bad. With more advances in other disciplines such as science, linguistics, or archaeology, more evidence has been tested and our story has been more reliable. Interpretation brings life to history. It is how we choose to tell a story based on the facts we have acquired. Maybe an apple slowly fell on Newton's head, but this did originate his idea of gravity. Does he believe in the supernatural force that governs the entire universe affect how he thinks about the world as a scientist? Since interpretation is created by us, there can be many ways to tell a story of the same thing. So it is bad to notice one problem that we always come back to when we talk about history, the problem of ultimate truth. As Lin Han wrote in her book, History Why It Matters, quote, the great variability of interpretation cast doubt on the possibility of historical truth, since historians always write from a point of view that is shaped by their personal history and social context. Their accounts cannot claim to be objective. Then again, we don't have the truest history, but some interpretations seem to be more reliable than others. This interpretation usually logically correlate to the facts and can be applied with the variety of evidence. The final point of history is that it is falsifiable, meaning that if there are more documents and better interpretations in the future, the story we tell might not be the same as in the present. To quote Lin Han again, Although the close connection between fact and interpretation inevitably raises doubt about historical truth, it also creates constant incentive for more research to resolve those doubts. Period interpretations, facts, and debates about them do not disappear from view. They provide the foundation for future work. Now, let's move on to Red and see what he has in so far about historiography. Hi, I'm Red, and that's it for history. Now, let's move on to a new concept, historiography. Historiography basically means the history of history. You've learned a few minutes ago that history is not only about memorizing everything happening in the past, but also finding out how those events affected humanity in the present time, and how do historians gather information? They collected the evidence and wrote their own version of history based on their point of view. So, Historiography in a clearer term would be a study of how and why historians documented the information through time. When historians are inspecting a piece of evidence, they don't only consider what was being written on it. They consider the context and subtext of the evidence too. In simple words, they don't only see what was specifically stated on the evidence, but they consider other factors as well. For example, when the evidence was created, what was happening at the time it was created, and the bias of the creator, etc., etc. 
This gives the historians a fuller understanding of the purpose of the evidence to fit on a historical timeline. And this is where historiography comes in. There can be a lot of documents about the same events that are totally different. And historiography will provide us with a critical mind to analyze what had happened and view history in a bigger picture. In conclusion, today we learn that history is about everything that was happening in the past. Moreover, history is essential for us to explain what makes us and our society at this moment the way they are and make us more of a global citizen, acknowledging other cultures as well as ours. People's memory is not always accurate, and their intention is not always to tell the whole truth. So history is not entirely based on an actual fact. There are some interpretations made by the historians to gather all the puzzle pieces as well. Therefore, historiography or the history of history is being used to comprehend the background of those past people when writing a history to give us a bigger picture. In the next video, we'll start by talking about the very first group of historians, the same one that initiates an advancement in science and philosophy, the Greeks. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on the notification button. Sleep tight and bye-bye.